Hey guys, how are you guys doing today? Um, well, I took a quick walk in the woods. I had a lot of things to do today. I also have to work tonight uh, on midnight shift. And um, I wanted to go live to show you a couple of these things. There's a lot of things out right now. We're currently making more videos. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties, but we'll pan through those. It won't be a problem. Um, I have a lot of things right here in front of me. Let me see if I can move this around without dropping you. Okay, I have a lot of different species here. And we're going to talk about them real quick. So, the first one, um, as you can see, there's a good many of them coming up. This is not a beginner's mushroom. This mushroom is amazing. Um, it was just recently something I've recently learned and I've tried and it is, if you guys see these coming up in your yard and you watch this video and you're positive that you can identify these, this is a paracel mushroom and you can tell why they call it that. And the paracel, well it's shaped like a paracel. And there's a couple things you're going to notice on this mushroom. This one doesn't really have a good one here. This one might be a little bit better of a specimen to show you. Um, you're going to notice a lot of distinctive features right away. Now there are some mushrooms that still have these distinctive features, but they have to have all the features that I'm going to tell you. If it doesn't have all of them and you're not sure, get rid of it. Okay. First, it's going to have this dark center and it's going to you're going to be able to tell because you're going to feel the stem. It's right on the other side of it. And you're going to notice the gills do not touch the stalk anywhere. Now when this mushroom comes up, it looks like a bulb. And I have one of those to show you. Okay. And you can see where there's a membrane attached that looks like to the stem. It's actually not attached. It's part of a veil that protects the spores. And with the paracel mushroom, you're gonna be able to notice that you can slide this, this ring around. It is not attached. That is a key feature. You're also gonna notice this scaly, furry stuff on the top that can just comes off when you, when you rub it. That is a part of another kind of veil that's over top of that when it is a bulb. And you can see that right here. So, now, this mushroom will not stain any colors when you touch it. You can scrape the stem with your finger and it should stay brown. Okay, that way you know that you still have the paracel mushroom. And you have those features that I showed you. You have the dark center, the real velvety top. It's real smooth and it rubs off. Okay, here's the key feature. You see that rattlesnake like appearance to the stem? This mushroom grows so fast that it stretches that out, that coloration out. And then you know that you have the paracel mushroom. Now this mushroom also has a lot of different names. This mushroom, I've heard it called the, the hayfield mushroom. I've heard it called the haystacker. Um, where I think it gets that name from is the smell. Remember, we smell our mushrooms to see what they smell like. And this one has that hay, like when, when you hear it, when you smell a hayfield being cut, it has that, that type of smell to it. So with, with that, we have the paracel mushroom and as you can see I have a good stack of them now they they weather they wither and go pretty fast so once you cut these all right once you cut these mushrooms you're gonna want to do something with them right away now you're not gonna want to eat the stem the stem is very woody so what you do is what I do is I reach inside and I 
pull the, the stock away from the top of the cap and you can feel it with your finger. You can push up on it from the top and you can pull it around and you'll take it right off. And again, you can continuously check to make sure you have that rattlesnake appearance. You're gonna have this where the mycelium bulb at the bottom. I usually don't do that, but I did it for the video. I wanna make sure I've cut that off and leave that mycelium right where it's at so I don't damage the mycelium in the ground. Then you're gonna be left with this cap. And then what I do is I take and I wash the cap really well. I'll set this down in some salt water to make sure any hitchhikers decide to leave. And you know, in between the gills, there can be a lot of hitchhikers, little bugs, stuff like that. Um, you're gonna wanna rinse that really well. Make sure you have all the dirt out of the cap. Now, if you don't have time and you do have a dehydrator, these dehydrate very well. I'm going to show you a couple of those dehydrated. They're very brittle, so you're not going to want to move them around a lot. And you want to seal them in pretty good. But this is a dehydrated parasol mushroom. So I can enjoy these with my venison later on here in the season. And uh, with anything else I want to cook them with. Um, if I want to make a soup, uh, then I can use those in it. So all interesting things that are all coming out right now um, these mushrooms won't be around very much longer but I'm starting to find more and more of them as we get rain I wait a couple days I go out to my spots and you'll see where they're at now talking about that these will come up in the edges of fields inside the woods and in the field you you can go for a walk in a cut cut grass area where you have uh, a wood line and you might see one of these sticking out of the grass. And they're pretty easy to see from a distance. They're pretty tall. Um, if you see some in the grass, walk into the wood line a little bit. There might be a couple more in there. I really don't find more than four or five in one spot. But that's not saying that you can't find more than that. I just commonly don't find that many. So, let's move on. We have a few to do. Now, if anybody on here has ever heard of lion's mane, we do have lion's mane, but now I'm soaking this because these are very hard to clean. This is in the family of lion's mane. That is pretty uh, unique. <laughs> um, what this is actually called, this isn't lion's mane, this is bear's head. And bear's head has a lot of the same characteristics of lion's mane, except lion's mane is a ball that has fur hanging off of it. This is more of a coral type. If I can get it in there here. It's a coral type, and you're going to see these tooth structures hanging down off of it. So these grow on, I find them a lot on hardwoods that have fallen down and they're dehyd or they're, um, they're breaking down and you can't miss this mushroom if you see it you're gonna you're gonna know you're seeing it um go up to it uh actually have my manual here here's exactly what i was talking about this is a lion's mane mushroom it's like a ball with all these tooth structures hanging down off it and this is bear's head and as you can see if you get one of these manuals you'll be able to start identifying what you have. Now, this is all in the uh, Heracium family, Heracium, and there's actually another one that has longer two structures and less of this coral type appearance. And I implore you to go ahead and study more about this. This mushroom is really good. My wife enjoys that one the most. Um, Mostly with that mushroom, it's not really good for dehydrating. It's not really good in freezing. But if you cook and freeze it, if you cook it in the butter, you saute it, and then take that, put it into a Tupperware dish, and freeze it, it'll last a lot longer if you want to preserve it. Most of the time when I find this, I try to clean it up as best I can, and then we have dinner. Uh, so um, what you're going to taste when you fry this up in a little bit of butter and maybe a little bit of uh, flour with it is to me it tastes like crab meat or lobster 
and it has a lot of nutritional benefits to your uh, your neuro system. Basically, anything to do with memory, they're studying these mushrooms right now to uh, combat Alzheimer's and some other things. So, very good mushroom. I, I would tell you to look into it more if you don't want to go out and look for it. They have plenty of supplements with lion's mane mushrooms that are in it. And that is one step further to being able to go out and do the, some of these things. So, now, let's talk about all of these. So, you can tell these are cat mushrooms. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold a couple of them up for you. So, these do not grow singly, but I have one pulled away to show you. These grow in clusters. And right now, they're coming up everywhere. Now, what are these? Well, these are not also a beginner's mushroom. Um, these have a lot of lookalikes, um, and one of them is deadly in Pennsylvania. So, with these, you have to take a little, a little bit more precaution in uh, harvesting. Now, it's easy to tell when you have clusters of them coming up, but if you have a couple here and a couple there, well, the deadly gallerina can grow like that too. And these both grow on decaying wood. You'll see them growing around old stumps in the woods. You're going to see them uh, clustered about around dead trees. Um, and there's a couple things we can notice right away. These stalks get wider towards the top, and then they get narrow where they hook into the group of the mushrooms. So they're tapered. They have little black hairs on the tops, and they have a honey type color. Now some of these are a lot more yellow than the others, and there's a lot of different species of these mushrooms, and what these are called are honey mushrooms. So, how do you know you have true honey mushrooms? Well, you're going to have a cluster of mushrooms. They're going to taper as they hook into each other in this group, this mass. Let's see if I can get a smaller look. They're going to taper as they hook into that. They're going to have, the smaller ones are going to have a veil covering the spore surface. And as that mushroom opens, it's going to leave a ring, which we can clearly see it has a ring. And this ring is attached to the stalk. I spore print every one of these that I eat just because of the gallerina. Now, what is the spore print going to be? Well, for a honey mushroom, it's going to be white. The spores are actually clear, but when they mound up onto a dark piece of paper or on your table surface where you have them sitting, you're going to be able to take your fingers, rub them through the spores, and look at it. It's going to be white. If it is rusty brown when you harvest one of these, which you think you harvest one of these guys, and you get a rusty brown spore print, that is the telltale sign between a honey mushroom and a deadly gallerina. That's very important to know. And before you guys get to that level, and if you are getting close to that level, I would implore you to do a lot of studying before you start eating some of these. They can get pretty big. They're pretty cool. Now, you're going to also see those black hairs, if I can get them in here. These little dark hairs on the stalk as well. And you're going to see a real fibrous. It's going to run with the stalk. It's real fibrous. Uh, the veil is very fibrous. You can see that. You're not going to want to eat the stem. Same with the other ones. Now, also, the gills are going to be attached to the stalk. I think that's pretty cool. That helps me identify them. So what I'm going to do is I tear these free. And when I look inside there, I shouldn't see a lot of wormholes and discoloring. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to soak these to get the bugs out of them. Because there's a lot of bugs that just like to hang out in these. It's like a free house. Um, I slice them up and then I saute them and then you freeze them. That's how you keep these. 
So you're going to discard the stem and you're going to keep the cap. And as you can tell, these are pretty big caps. Um, the younger you can get better, that, that is always the best, but always find them so you can do spore prints. Um, you, I, I tend to spore print every one of them, so I'll let them open up a little bit and then I'll do that. You can really see little dark hairs on the top of this. The honey color. Very good mushroom. Um, you want to cook these really well because with most wild mushrooms there is toxins inside them that break down with the heat and then your body can use them. So all that white material on the inside have that honey yellow on the outside. So just showing you some of the bounty that's waiting for you right now in the creation. Um, of course, you're going to want to clean them really well. I got a lot of dirt involved with some of these. I mean, come on, guys. It's right out here in the woods for you. Um, and I'm not done yet. <laughs> that was about a couple hour walk. Uh, hopefully, my wife doesn't watch this. I was supposed to be on task today, and I, I was most of the part. But, uh, uh, I had to get away and do a video. I just knew I had to. So, let's talk about this guy. You're going to see these growing in people's yards. And I'm focusing on this one because there's no look-alike to something this size. This is the giant white puffball. These come up in grass, mostly in yards, on field edges. And sounds like a melon. And it looks like a melon. And my buddy actually calls these moon melons, <laughs> um, which is a pretty good name for it. Now, if you're going to harvest a puffball, you're going to want to get the ones that are volleyball size and above because there are some other puffballs that will look like one of these that is not one of these. Now, I don't know if this one's good to eat or not, but we're about to find out. So how do you do that? Well, here's a smaller one that I found in that same area, and I went ahead and cut it. You see this? It is not white. It's white material. It's real bread like, but you can see that it's discolored. You can see this coloring on the outside edge. This is not a puffball you're going to want to eat. This will upset your stomach. It could possibly make you a little bit sick. And you can see the spores are starting to turn right here in this hole. And that's fine. I'm going to leave this in the yard, probably down on here on the edge, and let the spores take off. I'd love to have these in my yard. And that's the way you guys can do that too. So let's find out if this great big one here is edible. Let's see if I can get this. Well, I'll cut most of it, I guess. Then we'll go to it. And this is what they're going to want to look like. This one is edible. This is good news for me and my kids tonight. My wife is at work. And we're going to cook up some puffball. So... How do we do that? Well, let me cut a small chunk out of this to show you guys how to do that. It's very easy to cut. I recommend a serrated knife so you're not smashing the puffball down because they are um, very squishy and brittle. Then you're going to have this skin on the outside edge. You're going to want to peel that right off and it comes off real easy. Discard that. Then you take the puffball material and what I do is I'll take a slab like about like this, I don't know, a little over a quarter inch, maybe a half inch thick, and I'll take it and I'll put it in milk, or sorry, milk. I will take that and put it in a little bit of egg beaten up on both sides, cover it, put some flour on it, and fry it. Now you can cut up into chunks and put it in the butter too and fry that up, and then you can add it to any kind of, um, anything you want to add mushrooms to. Now this does not have a very strong taste, so I brown it on both sides. Browning it causes the flavor to be a little bit more uh, strong. You're, you're enhancing that flavor. So, that's just some of the things I found in two hours today, guys. Um, and I have a lot of work to get these all processed. I'm going to probably take about another hour to process everything. So, um, and I don't think I went over um, the Paracel. When I, when I break those off, and I get them clean and I have them soaked and everything's good to go with them. I take them and I just flour both sides and throw them into a hot griddle with some uh, hot butter inside of it. And I fry both sides, make sure you cook it really well. 
So let's talk about some of the things that are going on today. So, hey Chris, how you doing? Um, we see the way the world's going. And yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm guilty of it myself. I get drawn into this, you know, the elections coming up, um, what's going on overseas. You have uh, all these different things going on. And, you know, you start thinking about prophecy of the Bible and, you know, have we, uh, what phase, what's going to happen next, you know, um, you got pre-trib uh, snatching away, you have mid-trib snatching away, you have end of the tribulation snapping or snatching away, are we in the tribulation, stuff like that. So, what's the most important thing? Well, I think to be in one of those discussions is good. But to be without Christ right now is very bad. Um, let's just start facing the facts. He told us what's going to happen. A lot of different uh, prophecy in the Bible about what's going to happen, what's to come. Um, and I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be very good. But if you look at it the right way, the people of the church, we're supposed to be longing for Jesus to return. Longing, not sitting around and, oh man, I can't believe this could possibly happen. I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm not, I don't know if I'm ready to, to look Jesus in the face. And a lot of us might be feeling that way. And uh, if you're feeling that way, well, you might want to start reading the Word a little bit more and looking in that mirror. What is between you and Him? Take it out of the way. Get that cleaned up. Get it out. Get it from behind you. You know, I've done things wrong. In the last three days, I've done things that I shouldn't do. Nothing like, you know, Ten Commandments, but, you know, I missed prayer meeting. It was something I wanted to do. I know that this country needs it, and I missed it. And I have nobody to blame but myself. So, are we ready? The Bible says, they that have that hope of Christ's return, they purify themselves. Have the things we've done in the last five days purified you? Have you, with those, with those three days, did you, do, did you do what Christ told you to do? Or are you wandering around? You know, that's a very important message now. Um... I actually, you know, I, I'm, you know, I clean, I clean my stuff up. I, I talk to God. So, the only thing that's ever in my mind is what I remember, because when God forgives you, you're forgiven. So, um, and if anybody ever needs to talk about anything, they can, you know, friends know that they have my number. Everybody on this site. You guys can message me right through the site. We have an email address on the site. You can message me with questions, things that are going on with you. I have a lot of subscribers in the Middle East all of a sudden, um, in Asia, <laughs> all over Asia. Um, and, you know, we're teaching foraging, but we're teaching Christ as well. And I'm starting to see that there's a lot of Christians in hiding. And that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, I didn't expect that on the site. I really didn't. Um, teaching foraging, what you can eat and what you can't eat. Well, some of these same mushrooms, like this honey mushroom, it's, it comes up, you know, in Asia. And um, the, the giant white puffball that I just showed you, those come up in Europe. Um, these, these mushrooms aren't just here. Some of them are, but most of them, the edible wild mushrooms, they're all throughout the world, and they're pretty well the same. Um... So I'm fortunate and thankful for everybody that's on and the, the people that took the time to watch this today and to see um, what nature has in store for you, what you might even have in your own backyard, and that we shouldn't be fearing where our next meal comes from because all we need is the knowledge of what you can eat and what you can't eat. And with that knowledge 
becomes reliance on the creation. I do not like to call it self-reliance because self-reliance is futile. So um, if you guys see mushrooms in your yard and you're not sure and you want to message me, go ahead and message me. I'll do my best to identify them. It's best for me to have hands on. Um, if you're one of my friends, of course, you know to bring them and show them to me. Um, if you're not, message me and uh, we'll work it out. We'll figure it out together. I've done that a lot in the last couple months and, uh, and I'm willing to do that. So, all right, guys, one more look just to what we have here. We have the honey mushrooms, the giant white puffball. Of course, this is the old one. We have the lion's mane or the bear's head, and we have the paracetals, which these are my favorite right here. So, guys, get closer walk better, clean up the activity in your life that doesn't need to be there, um, and be ready. If you guys want to talk about it, you can. As of right now, I'm looking at some possible big changes in my life. Um, nothing with the family, nothing like that, nothing. Um, I'm looking at Possibly going and doing another job deal. That might be a shock to some of you guys. But the opportunity is there for me. And um, it might get me more time doing this. And I think this is more important right now. So stick with me. Keep foraging. I love you guys. And get close to Christ. It's the only way. Have a good day.